Hey everyone, welcome to GMI Hub Online, and I'm Cheryl Duke, your host, and I am so glad that you are here to be with us. If this is your first time being with us, thank you so much for joining us. And I want to ask you to do me a favor. Can you just hit that subscribe button and that little bell that's on the top corner? The reason why I'm asking you to do that is because every time we are putting on a program like this we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to tune in as soon as we have this broadcast on air so definitely click that little bell button and the subscribe button if you've never heard of gmi hub before why don't you check us out on our website gmihub.ca right there you will find all about who we are, what we do, and all the different projects that we are working on and the events that we are, are doing and everything that we're doing to support the gospel and Christian music scene. So definitely check us out there. You can also follow us on our social media. We are on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and X. So definitely check us all out, out there. It's basically at GMI Hub, except on X, we are at Industry Gospel. And that should be scrolling along the bottom. So definitely go check us out there. I'm really excited about this particular interview we're having because today we are spotlighting an industry. And the reason why I think that's exciting is because the gospel and Christian music scene is a lot more than what we see. It's more than what meets the eye. It is, um, there, there are support um, entities that are involved and and we want to bring light to those support entities and one of those support entities is in the radio industry and I'm so thrilled that per your request you said to interview a DJ I got one <laughs> so um, we're going to be meeting today with Jason Lloyd who's otherwise known as DJ analyst of SPR live uh, which is a streaming radio station based out of the Toronto area. Jason, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for having me be a part of today's program. Very appreciative of the invitation. Wonderful. We're glad to have you here. So, so Jason, I'm going to have a little fun here because I want to know about SBR Live and I want our audience to know more about SBR Live. So I'm going to give you a few minutes just to talk to us about SBR Live, what it is, where you can tune, you know, who do you feature, all that kind of stuff. Thank you once again. Um, so SBR Live FM um, SPR, the acronym stands for Streaming Praise Radio and then Live, and then, you know, adding the FM aspect to it, um, is known to be Canada's first gospel internet radio station. Um, so we are approaching uh, our 25th anniversary next year. Um, the station's owner and CEO is Mr. Claremont Humphrey, um, who has received uh, the, the vision for this platform many years ago. Uh, Mr. Clement Humphrey was involved in terrestrial radio station prior to starting this internet radio station. The task um, back almost 25 uh, years ago was quite um, daunting for him, one who was new to technology. However, he felt that he needed to follow the leading of what the Lord had placed on his heart to do. So starting out with, you know, the IBM computers and floppy disks and the cassettes and transferring music, you know, onto the computer. And those were some of the um, grassroots, um, you know, tasks that were required to build and lay platform for what we now have, you know, 24, 25 years after. So the station, was established to communicate the unadulterated word of God through music, through spoken word, through whatever means that, you know, possible to be streamed, to be pushed out from the platform. That's the basis of this station. Music has sort of taken over, if I must say, um, because currently the playlist that we do have um, do play music um, compared to the live shows where we would have interviews and um, have uh, sermons and so on. Um, but we are happy that, you know, the station still exists, it's still around and it's still relevant. And I'm happy that I've been able to be a part of it um, 
since the past four and a half to five years. Wow. Wow. It's been, it's a 25 year old station. So it's based in Toronto. Am I, I was correct in saying that, correct? That is correct. In the GTA, specifically in Mississauga. Oh, okay. So you're in Mississauga. So you're in the GTA. Um, and I'm, I'm very curious. I'm very curious. And now have you, you yourself been involved in both the streaming and the traditional radio or just the streaming side? So just to stream inside, when I discovered SPL Live FM, I came in as a DJ with a friend at the time. Um, my uh, The friend at the time wanted to get a little bit more traction from having a program. Um, I got exposed to um, the technology. A part of me is driven by technology and I embrace technology. And um, again, more than just a button pusher, but when I understood what the technology was being used for, it I connected it right away. I really connected with it. And so um, I stuck around and um, I, was, I had an opportunity to have a radio program that um, in January will be five years. And then shortly after that, the owner asked, listen, I, I've been praying to the Lord for help. And he has, you know, Kind of highlighted you at this moment and he said would you like to you know help manage the station and and and, and manage what we do um at that time i was kind of like huh because i i don't know anything about broadcasting um i'm just trying to figure out how to become a dj at the time so a lot was presented to me a lot was just being offered to me a door opened up and i walked through it well, wonderful. And then and, and five years later, look at where you are right now. It's amazing. Now you touched on technology. I'm curious. Um, what technology is used in streaming radio or at least it's SVR live type? Well, we have um, the fundamentals. So again, mixers, audio board. Um, I don't think that will ever go away. But then um, because it's internet and having that analog sort of sound being properly converted to digital and to be pushed out and to be heard properly um, there's a whole lot involved and so uh, myself and the, the station owner handles much if not all of the technicalities behind the scene you know talking to the streaming um, server service providers and then working effortlessly to always have a quality sound. Um, we are at a stage where if you don't sound good or look good, nobody is going to bother stick around to know what you're talking about or to even look at what mm -hmm. you're doing. And so um, the the mixes are one thing, but then with the software, I had to learn quickly now um, OBS. I had to learn how to um, you know understand that um, and then learn the, the core software again we use radio boss and that's how we schedule our programming that's how we can um, put in the jingles and everything is time-based and being a 24 7 radio station um, there is a scheduling and a precision to what we do because at any point in time we don't know who will tune in and so we want that the the word of god the message of the gospel of hope or whatever it is to always be heard and Ultimately, mm -hmm. to have an experience, a personal encounter with Christ is what we want to do. So behind the scenes, um, it's important that that's framed properly to be effective all the time. Right. How does the station engage their audience? I know you've mentioned the different shows, but, but um, how do you reach out to your audience to let them know SBR Live or about any particular programming? So our main um, vehicle that's used is currently social media. We do have our um, listeners, mm -hmm. our daily listeners and followers. And so we keep them abreast of our shows, of how it's evolving, of um, new shows, uh, new show hosts. And so that's um, mm -hmm. one means. But currently in the past few years, I must say, um, as I've gotten involved and we were able to refine a lot of significant things like the website, the presentation and the effectiveness, and that's still a work in progress. Um, we've been using the internet, the technology 
to um, help bring awareness. Uh, we still have unexplored um, ways that we would like to use locally and regionally. And that would be in personal, like live on location opportunities and partnering with um, other um, like-minded um, establishments in the region. Um, but I must say that the internet, the technology, social media, and specifically, I, we, I wear many hats just because of, of the need. Um, you know, it's difficult sometimes to find the right resources um, that would have the right heart for a vision. And so I would be the marketing. And when there's a program, a live program, I will take snippets on it to put on our social media. So if individuals might have missed the live, then I give them a teaser online to bring them back to the YouTube channel or to the video on demand for them to see the entire programming. So that's one key way that, you know, we've been um, working towards and been using um, to help keep our listeners and viewers engaged. Mind you, our social media, it's quite decent in terms of the listenership and the subscribers. So we definitely have to exploit that. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. I'm gonna get be a little bit bigger than beyond um, SPR Live, but thinking of streaming stations in general, um, what do you, what advantages do you see with streaming radio in compared to other forms of media, maybe to compare to traditional radio or, or other forms? What, what do you see as an advantage um, in the industry with streaming radio? It's, it's borderless. The industry, mm. it's, borders, it's borderless. There's no restriction or restraint on the reach of internet radio. And that's a game changer. Again, terrestrials, mm -hmm. and again, forgive me, I'm, I'm not an expert in, in, in radio station, but from what I've learned and, and I understand, terrestrial radio station, traditionally, they have a limit with the signal. And you have to have the, you know, a, a device to pick to be able to pick up that signal, whether it's AM or FM. But when it comes to the internet now, it goes beyond borders. It goes beyond the country. And um, that's one of the refreshing and encouraging things that drives what we do to see listeners in remote, in remote parts and areas of the world. It's huge. And we would never get that from terrestrial radio station. And uh, as a matter of fact, since the onset of internet radio, some established terrestrial radio, uh, sorry, terrestrial radio station have not switched, but incorporated internet streaming um, as a part of what they do, because they understand that, hey, Canadians are all over the world. And if, mm -hmm. you know, individuals who have migrated, who are traveling in different parts of the world still would like to hear what's going on in their country, and a local station is streaming through the internet, they can always connect and see or hear what's happening in that local, in their local hometown. And so it's a game changer, okay. and it's an opportunity that the um, music that's shared with us from the gospel ministers and artists, again, are not limited to a region, but it can quickly be heard across the world. And that gives them a lot more visibility and notoriety as well. So you can probably see a good, bright future for streaming radio being because it's so vast. And like you said, it's limitless. Correct. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and because of that, it's, um, we have encountered great uh, partnerships with others um, around the world who, who are doing the same thing. And we understand that it's not a lot, especially when it comes to the gospel and Christian music. So we have, mm -hmm. you know, been pulled into a group where we can share and support. And, you know, we can pull in some of their live shows and then they would take some of our live shows. So it's kind of like we helping each other out and it's been really good. And terrestrial radio stations would not be able to do that. So again, right. the, the whole future, it's really um, vast. Again, understanding it is equally as important to have some measure or a measure of, of success regarding the future. 
Wow, that's wonderful. Okay, now I'm going to dial it back into SPR Live and ask a couple more questions. One is, what style, like I know you're at the gospel um, Christian radio station. If an artist, uh, if an artist wants to send their music in, what, um, first, how do they do that? What would be the way to do it? And what type of music do you normally play? Is there a particular style of gospel music that you play or do you play all kinds? Thank you for that question. Um, our website is set up to um, have anyone interested in sending us music um, in a way where they can upload their music in mp3 format to us and we will get that um, actually last week i actually cleared that pool where we had maybe just under a hundred um, music files um, that have been submitted over the past uh, year um, and again we would put that through vetting and check-in and um, we, we always encourage the metadata to be filled out or uh, to be added to the file so it's easy for us to do the vetting and then the integration of that file into our archives the genre the year all that stuff it's very useful and it's very important um, and so that's one way again we do accept direct um, emails with the attached file and again that email can be found on our website um, and then that's received by myself and the other members of our team and then we will vet the music and check for the quality that because that's important um, we, we want to have a a good representation of the Word of God there's so many things out there that's been played and heard so when it comes to the the lyrics the vocals the arrangement um, sorry to say we don't you know we would reconsider uh, something that sounds like it was just kind of put together in somebody's basement. Not to be insultive, but we have also, in the same manner, replied to individuals and say, hey, you know, thank you for this, but give them some pointers. And to be honest, that has been received quite well by a few artists. And so we will continue to support in, in that aspect of things. Um, in terms of the genre of music, now, we receive all genre, and we actually... Um, try to position ourselves to um, encourage not just one particular genre, but all. Um, me, personally, on my radio program, it's a showcase of gospel music, and I intentionally go after as many genres as possible. Um, with the gospel, and I always say that, you know, heaven is going to be so multicultural, and, you know, we shouldn't just get used to what we are comfortable with or used to. But the genres on a whole, and I know individuals and people have their take on a particular genre being represented as gospel or Christian. But we're not, that's not what we're about in being critical or biased. Um, there are many people from different walk of life, especially here in Canada, that have been led, they've come, they've had a past whether they were into hip hop or rap, contemporary, and now they're saved and they're serving the Lord and they're using that gift now um, for the kingdom. That's who we want and that's what we want. And we welcome that. It just so happened that the station, the owner is from Guyana. Myself is from the Caribbean. So we do have a Caribbean structure or in terms of how things are run. And I think that kind of misleading but we have actually mm. um solicited and i've actually you know gone after individuals when i when i go through uh, music online or groups online and i've welcomed um groups and individuals across canada um so we've structured actually our playlist in a way to capture all of that so throughout the day throughout um the weeks we intentionally set playlists to represent the genres interesting okay so so just to clarify that means any artist like if there's a gospel and christian artist in canada or canadians around the world and whether they have a jazz sound or a rock sound or a contemporary sound or a rap sound or uh you know, a punk sound, they're welcome to send their music to you for consideration on playing on their station? 
Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we do have some producers. Uh, one particular one is in Finland who frequently sends mm -hmm. us music. Could you review this for consideration for airplay? And I would take that and, and listen to that. And again, I can't say physically we have a template that we follow to, okay, check, this is good, check, this is good. I love the, the Holy Spirit to lead me based on what I know the station represents. And you could tell right away um, from the time a, a group or person opens their mouth on a song and the lyrics, is it the gospel? Is this a true representation of the gospel of Jesus Christ? And I think that's ultimately the defining factor of what we want. Is it correct? Is it accurate in what is being said and what is being sang about? These are important things because these are the things that are going to be, um, that's how the station is going to be rated. And uh, again, we don't want to mislead, but we want to, the best that we can, to lead listeners and viewers properly. Wonderful. Okay, so if someone wanted to listen to SPR Live, where do they find you? SPRLiveFM.com is the website. And um, when you log on to our website, you'll have the option um, to listen to us via an embedded player. Um, also, you'll have the ability to download the SPR Live FM radio app, both for the Android and iOS platform. Um, the best listening experience is truly via the app. Um, you're able to interact with us via chat on the app. Um, there's a subcomponent of the radio on the app, which is a TV model that we, that's pretty new and we are working on establishing that. But that streams, you know, um, Christian movies and uh, documentaries, as well as it pulls in our live programming. So again, we have really high expectations for the TV component coupled with the radio. Um, again, searching for SPLivefm.com on uh, Google will pull in some of the other um, internet radio um, portals um, that we can be found on as well. And to re-emphasize, okay, so that's SPRLiveFM.com. Uh, FM. Is that correct? That's correct. It, put the yes. SPRLiveFM.com. And that's how you can listen to SPR Live around the world. Now, I know you've hinted, Jason, that there are uh, people from Finland and other places. Is your listenership, like, do you, do you find your listenership is vastly international uh, or is it primarily national or local where um, is your listeners yeah oh, yeah so collectively if we look at the stats and i do check my stats ever so often our stats i should say um we still have canada and america being the top two and the interchange as um, having the highest listenership um, again, which we would expect, um, but if you were to just separate the U.S. and Canada, everyone else is international. And again, the top 10 um, listenership, apart from Canada and the U.S., it's, it's huge. So the Caribbean, um, Africa, and Europe, and um, South America. Mm -hmm. So it is quite vast, and it changes over time. Um, so it's really right. great to see. Um, so I think collectively, if we were to combine all the non-North American listeners, they probably would match to the North American listeners. So it's a, a good spread um, globally. Awesome. Awesome. So if you want to listen to SPR Live, you can check them out online, sprlivefm.com. And wherever you are around the world, you can tune in and hear the music and the message that comes off of that station. That's wonderful. Okay. So Jason, I'm going to switch now to you as the DJ, simply because people have asked, have you never interviewed a DJ. So I'm doing it right now. <laughs> okay. You <laughs> mentioned earlier that you got, you know, you were introduced to streaming radio, um, 
just, you know, because of a friend. And, and I'm just curious, why, why did that interest you to become that DJ that, you know, what was that, that, um, initiated an initial, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That initial interest that pulled you in to being a DJ on a streaming radio station. Well, it started a few years ago and um, and just a quick backdrop. I've always been involved with music. Um, I don't play an instrument. I don't, I won't say I can't sing, but I just won't <laughs> sing in public. Um, but I grew up around music. I grew up, you know, in the Caribbean with the secular stuff. And I always wanted to DJ. I had relatives who were DJs, but I, I never got into it um, when I was out there in the world. And um, being in church a couple of years ago and hearing a message that, you know, the, the, the gift and the ability that you have, you know, that God gave you and you, you that were used for the world and in the world, now that you're saved, those gifts and abilities are still there. And that resonated with me. And that was the prompting that took me to the next level in terms of, you know what? I want to DJ all gospel music though. And I'm going to teach myself. And that was that. And then I never looked back. And so mm -hmm. I, I invested in the, the hardware and I um, taught myself and got frustrated in the process. And I knew that there were others doing it for years that are better and would be better than me. But then I'm like, I'm not doing it to compete. I'm, I'm doing it to make a difference and to be a difference. So in, in the process, I would always talk to God and say, God, I, I, I don't want to do this because the other gospel DJs, I, I know they're there. I've, I've heard them, you know, um, I want this to be something different and unique with what I do. And so as time went by, um, I initially approached the station um, being a rookie in things. I never wanted to speak on the mic because I was still trying to figure out how to DJ. So I would just, you know, keep the mic away from me. And as time went by, the boldness and the courage came and a little bit more confidence came. And I sort of established into, again, my own, my own meaning, um, using the music that I would select that would be heavily um, influenced by the, the gospel. We're not singing around necessarily about the name of Jesus or Christ, but really have the gospel being preached through the music. I would use that as a platform during my program to, um, you know, exalt or to amplify. And so mm -hmm. rather than having um, a program or being a DJ and just play the music and be quiet, I've now gotten comfortable where I can play the music and accentuate certain parts and aspect of the song to really allow it to stick in the listeners and viewers mind. And honestly, I've heard and gotten feedback from individuals that like, well, I've, that's very unique and that's not the norm. And I think that's one of the things that people would, you know, are attracted and enjoy listening to me or listening to the program. And, um, mm -hmm. but that it, it has come a long way in terms of, um, the DJing and being comfortable and asking myself, is DJing an acceptable sort of gift or service biblically? You know, all these questions as would go through one's mind as to what you're doing. Is it making sense? Is it making sense to anybody? You know, is there such a thing as a gospel DJ? You know, you've heard about a flute player and, you know, and there are piano players and, you know, there's a drummer, but a DJ, you know, um, you have pieces of a live band that's better appreciated than a DJ. So you go through the process of trying to really follow through with what's on your heart. And that's another thing is just following through what was on my heart, what the Lord placed on my heart and to try to execute it as best as I can. And I'm like, well, if it's this what I have that I can use to serve because I'm, I'm not leading a praise and worship and I'm not in fivefold ministry. Um, 
yeah, I can do DJ. It has buttons. I can push it. <laughs> and again, again, DJ is beyond button pushing, right? There's a skill. There's an art to it as well. So uh, I, not to disrespect those seasoned DJs, but yeah, there is an art and a skill with the music and blending the music and, and just having the sound being different than what people are accustomed to. But you're still hearing mm-hmm. the message of salvation in it. And we're not really half stepping about it or around it we're just being direct about it and i I think that's what has kept me and has encouraged me and allow me to dare i say stand out just a little bit just a little bit yeah yeah i know when when we were talking just before we started the the recording here um you mentioned that that being a dj actually is your ministry it's not something that you you know you sit there and go it's my nine to five i have to do this it's for you it is a ministry and you know and god is a creative god you know he he's using you and other gospel gjs if there are many to basically push out the gospel. You are the guys that are actually taking the gospel message that other people are are creating through music and the arts. And you're kind of saying, hey, we're putting this over the airways, right? And we're letting people know about it. We're the guys that are launching it, right? So so yes, uh, it, it's awesome. And that I think that's why there's been lots of questions like, why not support the DJ? So we're here. We're supporting the DJs. You know? Thank you so much for doing what you do. You know? <laughs> Because awesome. without Thank you, you. Um, <laughs> because without you guys, you know, artists able to music as far as as it, the music is now without you sharing that music on your platform. So that, I think that's really awesome. So, as a representative of all the streaming radio stations, thank you so much <laughs> for what you do. Um, what um. What would you share with artists from from a DJ perspective? What would you share with, um, I said artists, I meant other people that might be interested in getting into uh, being a a DJ on streaming radio or any form of DJ for that matter. And what advice would you give them in terms of do's and don'ts? Um, and I, I know you've already said follow your heart, but what kind of things would you tell them uh, as advice? Um, they are, again, my, my conviction with this is that I, I will not compromise as a DJ. A DJ can play any music. Once you understand the, the beat matching and different things, you can play any music, any genre. But for me specifically, as it was given to me, it has been and will always be gospel, no compromise, because I've experienced that side of the world where being bothered and annoyed where you're in a public place and the world pushes out whatever music at you, you can't control it. But this is the one time we can control what is being heard. And it is good information. It is good news. So these are the the fundamental things that drive and should drive what we do as a gospel dj to be a true sincere representative of the body of christ in any capacity as a whole is the drive and the conviction in your heart that you believe that this is the way this is going to have an impact this is going to change lives Mm -hmm. so definitely watch the drive now you talked about developing your um the unique way of delivering the music or delivering the message did you do that by listening to a number of different uh, a number of different djs i know you said you listened to some in the u.s but did, was it that was the main way to help you know how to differentiate yourself from them well I didn't listen to, I wouldn't say I listened too much because if I did, I think it would frustrate me because by all means, they'd be better than me. So, <laughs> and so what I did, I, I well, it took the time to, again, to develop the skill naturally, but also, you know, taking a glimpse here and there of what was already being done. So I didn't necessarily mm-hmm. listen to their style or their way but as a gospel dj 
um, and I'm listening just to see what or how other gospel DJ deliver. I realized that a lot of the DJs, the gospel DJs were, they, they were really good at the craft, at the skill mm. and playing the music and music have evolved and there's so many remixes and there's so many refixes, right? But I'm like, I always, I was listening for their involvement in all of that. Because again, it ultimately would become a, an entertainment. And I think mm -hmm. we, we, we have we have superly, you know, overly entertained when it comes to Christianity and music in so many different ways. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah. knowing that my skill set would not, again, even if I practice every day, which I don't, we'll never get to, to that level. I needed to represent, I needed to have a true or better, I should say, representation as a gospel DJ, where that not being fearful of sharing the message of salvation and, and repentance and encouraging lives and that sort of thing. Um, I, I didn't want to be afraid of doing that but coming right out. Mm -hmm. So there was a moment of assessing the terrain just to look at how things were being done and saying mm -hmm. to myself, well, it's been done and it's been done over the years. And many of the current gospel DJs, they were secular DJs before and they migrated into, so there was a certain swag of the secular world that's still in them. You can see it, right? Mm -hmm. And again, there isn't, there shouldn't, in my philosophy, as a gospel DJ, you know, they, sh they, they need not be any competition or anything because it's the same purpose. That's something that, mm -hmm. that is still in the world and mm -hmm. coming together in a true collaboration as a gospel DJ should be for edification in the pure sense, right? So right. That, that's kind of been my, my, my approach when putting things together. Okay. Okay. Um, any challenges that you have encountered that you would want to, well, that you've learned from and that you would share that lesson to another person that might be interested in uh, becoming a DJ? One of the things being a DJ, and I, I say to many people that I'm a, a radio DJ, um, more so than a public DJ or a DJ for entertainment purposes, um, I do seldomly agree to go out and do a function. Um, and I'm very critical of what I do too, because um, I, I don't want to fall in line with just, okay, just another gospel DJ trying to do this or trying to do that. But I've asked the Lord, the Lord seriously, when I do this, I want to have an impact. I don't want to entertain, but I want people to be moved with the music that I that I hear, I want them to be uplifted. Um, a part of part of um, my slogan for the program that I have is to revive you unto rejoicing and dancing. So, um, when I'm approached to do a function, I pretty much state my disclaimer that it's only gospel. Mm -hmm. Not going to play anything else. I'm not sorry, but this is a commitment that I've made. So there's a, there's a street mm -hmm. level of understanding from the get-go, right? And um, I think with that, I've kind of, you know, deter a few people, but that's fine because I know I'm not in this for that main purpose. Um, every week on a Friday, I have my program. That's sometimes the only time that I touch my controller and I set up everything. Um, but, uh, you know, I know it's an extension. Being out there is an extension of um, the ministry. However, dealing with people, as you would know, <laughs> can be difficult and it can be discouraging. Um, in the state, in the studio, I'm by myself. It's quiet. I'm just streaming and everything like that. And it's, it's easier. And I know we naturally go towards an easier path. But even with Christendom in Christianity and doing something for another believer, it gets into, okay, the cost and the negotiation and you know, you go and you set up, you bring all the equipment and you're there. And sometimes I think, 
I wonder if these people really appreciate what I'm doing. You, you know what I mean? All these questions <laughs> that you ask in your mind, <laughs> am I just here for entertainment or they, is there real appreciation for what I have to offer or what is being offered? And mm -hmm. I just don't feel that it's necessary or it's worth it to have to go through that back and forth as believers, as representative of the body, to go back and forth, to, to value one's time and all that stuff, right? Um, and I know there's a cost for everything. And part of being a gospel DJ is being a blessing to the body. Yes, mm -hmm. we have a function. We want to have good music that we can dance to, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a part of what, what's encouraging to me. Again, in the secular field, I used to club and I, I was there. I was, would be the one who, you know, close down the club and the discos and whatnot. So I understand that aspect of it. But as believers on this side now, we can still enjoy ourselves in the Lord. And I think as a gospel DJ can and is a key component with that being done. So dealing with people is a, a challenge. Dealing with people um, in, 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 you know, amongst the brethren can be a challenge um, when you're out there. And what would you do? What would you recommend to deal with that challenge? Best way to deal with that kind um, of a challenge? I think it's important to, again, always coming back, it comes back to being true to yourself and the convictions. Mm -hmm. um, God has been really good in terms of, okay, as I mentioned to you, um, being a part of the station, um, I don't want it to sound bad, but volunteer or part-time because, again, having a full-time job, just like serving in a church on a Sunday and, you know, whether it's part of the media and whatnot, the station, I look at it as part of that. So when it's looked at from that perspective, um, I'm not a DJ who's looking for a gig to, to make money. And I think that's important from the get-go. Again, what is driving you and what, what are you after will determine mm. the quality of what you do, right? So I've told people, listen, I don't have to charge you for this, but I'm going to mm. because it would be nice to upgrade my microphones and get some nice microphones. Or, <laughs> you know, it would be nice to, to have some things if something breaks, you know, that it's, you know. Um, but again, like everybody else, it's one of those things whereby, okay, ah, I rather do it for nothing rather than I give a, a price and then it's it ends up being like I'm doing it for nothing type of thing, right? But all that to say, I have not allowed that to discourage me because I've kept what the Lord has placed in my heart as to how to do it and how to represent Him in this capacity. So. It's imp I, I believe it's always important mm. and good if you're able to lend assistance or help to whatever it is that somebody really needs, you know, um, under whatever circumstance. And But keep God at the forefront and not the individuals. And I think after all is said and done, you could always be light <laughs> in your heart mm -hmm. uh, and in your mind okay. because you know you would have upholded, you would have upheld your standards and what the Lord has called you to do. And when there's any compromise, then... I think that's when things get shaky and then ultimately you could be led off on a course that you don't necessarily want to be on or know that you shouldn't be on in terms of what you stand for. All right. Wow. Um, broadening away a little bit from your uh, experience as a DJ, um, uh, we talked about how the importance of being doing what you do in streaming radio helps share the music and um alongside of streaming radio there are entities like spotify and apple music um, and some others that are doing something similar um how have those services affected um stations like yours like sbr live and you as a dj have they had any effect on you at all I believe it has. I believe it has, and definitely nothing that we control, we can control or even compete against, um, because these mm -hmm. are established platforms that um, 
acknowledges in a different way the artist and their music. And so if they're a minister of the gospel, if they're an artist, they want to get their music on that platform or any platform or anywhere that will help them attract listeners or viewers. That's what they're after. Um, and there might even be monetary um, um, things behind that. Um, however, with our streaming platform, the key difference is we are live in the sense and uh, we're able to present it differently. Yes, you can go to this platform and listen to a track and enjoy it and you can listen to it over and over again and you can um, put together your playlist and you can listen to that at any time and you know your feel good music and whatnot. But the difference in, in what we do is a lot more dynamic. Um, whereby we, we, we have a person, there's an actual live person. I mean, we're coming, we are in an era where AI is taking over. And mm -hmm. I've seen an AI DJ concept, <laughs> uh, which was funny. And how is that? <laughs> um, it, it spooked me out. It really spooked me out because we, we have embarked upon an age where you with an individual a real person can be removed from even mm. from a position as a dj we can see them being replaced as a chef in a, in a kitchen to a robot or ai right so as time go by um we are gonna have a greater appreciation for a real life person in front of a screen as opposed to, yeah, I, that's your music library with Apple and you can buy music and, you know, and because CDs are gone, there's no more cassettes. And uh, when artists come out with an album, they're not selling CDs anymore. That's why they are more encouraged in placing it on this platform to get some sort of recognition or some sort of return on their investment, right? So um, the more that they can, reach and get connected with streaming platform such as ours is highly important to give um, you know that extra reach and that extra influence and um, the more arms and legs that they have in what they do the better it is um, and each avenue is unique in terms of the reach and the influence so um, I support the artists whenever I can by buying their music and pulling them down into my playlist. Um, some of the DJ programs actually have plugins that's directly integrated to some of these platforms. So if you have an account with um, Apple, you can actually, mm -hmm. you know, the music that you purchase, you can pull them directly into your music library and play the music directly. Right. So there is, you don't have to download. It's just embedded, you know, into, um, again, I use virtual DJ, one of them that I use. And so logging mm -hmm. into, um, the virtual lo opening virtual DJ and, um, logging into Apple, logging into, um, Spotify are easy ways of just integrating the music, um, into what we're doing. And that's, that's really, um, an easy thing to do, a convenient thing to do. Jason, thank you so much. Like you have shared so much about SBR Live and about the interesting facets of being a DJ and uh, some of the benefits and some of the challenges. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. If you who are watching uh, were encouraged and um, you know, challenged by what you were, were watching, you know, let us know, put a comment down below, because uh, we'd love to hear from you on what, what your thoughts are. Again, if you want to tune into uh, SPR Live, you can check them out on their website, spralivefm.com. Um, I 
think you can go on there. You can probably see their programming and you can look for DJ Analyst. That's what his, uh, it's Jason Lloyd, but it's DJ Analyst on that pl- platform. So go ahead and check it out. You can check out his show as well, as well as the other shows and messages that are on there. Well, we have had an awesome show and I am so glad that you were here with us again. Uh, if you haven't done it already, click that subscribe and hit that little bell so that the next time that we have a show on, you can't and won't miss out on it. Of course, if you want to know more about GMI Hub Online or GMI Hub, go to our website, gmihub.ca, and check us out. Uh, There you can see what projects we're doing. You can learn more about uh, the events that we are putting on, some of the new things that are coming up in the following year. So go and check us out there. You can also follow us on our social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, X, and of course here on YouTube. So definitely check us out there. Well, it's been a wonderful time. Again, thank you, Jason, for joining us and being here. And thank you, viewers, for being here. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time on GMI Come Online.